Welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. We're going to talk about standard ACLs this time around. So um, there are other videos in this series on extended ACLs, named ACLs, um, even MAC filters, but a standard ACL is the easiest of the lot. So it will filter only on source IP address. It doesn't care about destination or um, TCP or UDP port or protocol number or any of the other things you can filter in an extended ACL, a standard ACL is only on source IP. So, so really, really easy to configure. And in fact, our ACLs are, you know, they're, they're uniform across the board on all of our platforms. They're also exactly the same as a Cisco ACL. So you can cut and paste it <clears throat> and it will work just fine. So, uh, the first thing we need to do to config T, it's access dash list, and then we'll see that the numbers here, 1 to 99 represents a standard ACL, and 100 to 199 is an extended ACL. Uh, so that's pretty standard across the board. So we're going to create a standard. So we do a 1, doesn't have to be a 1, I could start at 99, could start at 50, doesn't matter, anywhere in that range. And we can have multiple lines in this access list as well. So access list one. Now there is an implicit deny at the end of every ACL, whether it's a standard or extended or named, <clears throat> which just says whatever is not permitted up until this point, we're going to drop it, right? So if you apply a blank ACL to an interface, it will drop all of your traffic, right? Because that implicit deny just says drop everything that, that you haven't permitted. <clears throat> so whether we choose a permit or a deny at this point depends on what you're trying to achieve. So what we could do is leave the implicit deny at the end and say, permit this, permit this, permit this, and deny everything else. But in most cases, you're going to create the reverse of that. And you're going to say, this is what I'm denying. I deny this host or this subnet, and then I want to permit everything else, right? So it just depends on what you're trying to achieve out of this ACL. Uh, the other thing we could do in here is we could do a remark. So a remark is just for your information, right? It's not something that, that gets processed. It is just a, um, a an informational line. So when you look at this ACL six months down the road, you're going to understand what you were trying to achieve, right? So uh, anyway, so we'll do the most common scenario. So we're going to do a deny here. And then uh, what can we deny? We can deny... Uh, by host address, right? So a specific one IP address or uh, a subnet. So we can we can uh, do an entire subnet. Uh, we could do it by host name. So if we had DNS set up, we could do a specific host name. I don't have DNS set up, so I'm not going to do it that way. And lastly, you could do any. So any's not so common uh, necessarily in a in a standard ACL, but any's are very very popular in um, in extended ACLs, and we'll use an any at the end, right? Because we're going to do a permit any uh, to permit everything except what we've denied. So let's uh, first we'll deny a subnet. So let's say we're going to deny 192.168.10.0. And so in an ACL, you need to do a reverse mask, right? Or a wildcard mask. So instead of doing, say this is a slash 24 normally. Instead of doing that, in an ACL, you need to do the reverse mask of that. So 0.0.0.255 is the reverse of a slash 24. So those are the bits that we care about, right? So we could do it that way. We also um, let you do a regular mask, and we will convert it for you in the config. So let me choose a different subnet, 192.168.11.0. And instead of typing out that reverse mask or that wildcard mask, we, you could just do a slash 24. And next time you look at your running config, that will be converted for you to that wildcard mask. So it, it, with a slash 24, that's an easy one, right? Everyone could do that in their head. But if you had like a slash 17 or slash 18, you'd actually have to sit and think about what that reverse mask is. So when we let, we'll just let you do that slash 17, and then it will convert it for you uh, in the running config. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, we can also do a particular host, right? So we could say deny and host, oops, 
and then the exact IP address of, of that host, right? So 1.1.1.1 might be a particular PC, okay? Um, so what have we done up till now? Well, let's have a look at that. <clears throat> we'll look at the show run. So our ACL, here it is. It's, uh, so we're denying this subnet, right? So everything from 192.168.10 we're denying everything from 192.168.11. You can see it turned my slash 24 into a, into a wildcard mask. And we're denying this host. So if I just apply this ACL as it sits right now, it's going to drop all of my traffic. Because, as I said before, there's an implicit deny. Even though you don't see it, there's a deny any at the end here, which says, if it's not permitted, dump it. So if I just apply that anywhere right now, it's going to drop all my traffic. And that's not what I want to do. So I want to add one more line. Access list one permit any at the end. So that just says if it's not um, if it's not denied somewhere prior, then then permit everything else except what's denied. Right. So this is probably the most common scenario for an ACL. OK, so we have our ACL. Now we need to apply our ACL. So we could apply it directly on an interface if you have an IP. So we have an IP address on uh, 1 slash 2 slash 2. And then we also have IPs on VE100 and VE200. So uh, let me go to an interface first. So 1 slash 2 slash 2. And I could do an IP access dash group. Uh, give it the number. So it was number 1 in this particular case. And then we have the choice of inbound or outbound. So Ideally, you want to you want to apply your access list inbound because you don't want to have to you know this router to make a routing decision, make a switch, switching decision, send it across the backplane, get it to the egress ASICs where it's just about to leave the box and then drop it. Right? That makes no sense. You might as well drop it as it ingresses the device. And if you drop it on the ingress, then you know. It, you stop the device from let, let's say it's it's um, it's potentially sending it out multiple ports. Well, you don't have to look at a, each egress port, right? You can just look at it one time on the ingress and drop it there. So inbound is the ideal way to do it. You don't have to, but that's ideal. Okay, so that's on a physical interface. Now, um, if I have an interface, if I look at my one of my other VLANs here, if I do a show run. Uh, so VLAN 100 has ports, you know, 111 to 1124 in it. So if I go to one of those interfaces, uh, let's say 111, and I try to apply that access group to the interface, it's not going to let me because I've already put that, that interface into a VLAN. So now I have to apply that access list or the access group to a particular uh, to the VE that belongs to that VLAN, right? So um, now we go to interface VE100, which is part of that VLAN. Now I can apply that access group to the VE. Okay. So once you put a port into a VLAN, um, then you need to apply the access list to the VE. All right. So um, you could do a show. Um, access list you can see well you can see all the access lists um, so we'll see so here's our access list standard access list one deny 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 permit um, so um, so that's about it yeah so so um, you know if you can watch the other videos on extended ACLs or um, you know named ACLs um, editing things like that but but that's it for a standard pretty straightforward um, just, you know, don't forget that implicit deny at the end. That will get you every time. All right. So thanks for joining and take care.